how much money do I have and do I want to buy a trailer? So we had a driver have a problem where they didn't have any cargo and they had to go back home empty, which cost me money. That was Molly that that happened to. So if we look at the log, uh, 28, she didn't deliver anything. So she went to Salem from, uh, she went from Salem to Reading, and when she got to Reading, there wasn't anything to bring back to Salem. So she just came home empty and uh, charged me fuel and stuff. Which is a problem. And that's the second time she's done that. It's been a long time since she did it the first time, but... Yeah, we want to kind of mitigate that. You are still on your way to Las Vegas. Nine hours. And you have 16 hours, and you're going from Ontario back to Salem. Okay. And you have a harvester, which might pay well. Okay. And you are going from Salem to Eureka. And you have something. That's two hours. So you're the one that's going to pay out the soonest. All right. So trailer time. Do we want to buy one? I, I think maybe. I don't think it matters where I am when I do this. So I think we're going to get a flatbed because it's what we can afford right now. Uh, we're not level 17 yet, but I, I don't know if I really care about the chain type because it's going to be pretty much you chaining, I think, more than one trailer together. No thanks. Uh, flatbed's fine. I think I'm going to increase the size, though. We'll go from a 45-foot one to a 48-foot one. I don't know what the advantage of the different axles are and the placement of the axles. I'm just going to go with a simple rear axle. That's probably good. Uh, color. It comes in this gray. You can do red, green, blue. Uh, it doesn't really paint the bottom, though. I'm just going to keep it gray, because that's the same color as the bottom. Okay? If I think if I pick up these, some of these other colors, it doesn't really match our other trucks. Like, my truck is yellow and black. Uh, the other Kenworth I have is yellow. Uh, the International Lone Star is blue. And the Peterbilt is red. So I can't really have it match from that standpoint. Okay, so upgrades. These are just going to be cosmetic things. Oh, okay, that's interesting. What are these other things? Toolbox. Huh. Let's go with the support frame. I mean, that cost me money to install. But what the hell? We got enough money. What is this? Steel wall, aluminum wall. Yeah, sure. Again, it cost me money. Probably not the wisest thing in the world, but... We're going to want to make it look nice, right? Uh... Oh, how many lights it has on the side. It's probably subtle, but I just noticed it. So there's a light here. If we do that, it has more lights. And if we hit the turn on light button, you get to see them more clearly. Yeah, sure. More lights is better. Um, our wheel hub. So basic steel wheels. We'll go to steel. And, uh, let's go standard. I want it to be a little shiny. Give it a hub. And some capped nuts the same thing back here okay flags no I don't want to do flags standard well our little lights on the side are, are round so I'm gonna stick with the round lights what is this uh, no okay that's probably fine so that's gonna cost me 38,000 we can afford that I've never done anything with trailers so I'm kind of curious how this is gonna work but Hopefully this will help. So I think what will happen is if there's a driver back at base, if they know there's a job somewhere where they can take this, they will. If not, it will just sit in the garage, I think. We can take it ourselves, but no thanks. I'd, I'd prefer to have the AI use it. It also, I think, increases profit margin because you're not you're using your own trailer rather than being kind of loaned one. So we'll confirm this. We'll purchase it. And then pick our garage. Okay. Yes. 
Now, where did it end up? Because from what I understood, it goes in one of your garage slots. But maybe I don't know that. Correct. Okay, I don't see it yet. Let's uh, go to... There should be a trailer manager. Yeah, there it is. Trailer manager. Flatbed. Oh, okay. I guess it doesn't really take up garage slots. I thought it did, because that's what I thought I read in the wiki, but I guess that's not correct. And we can always change the configuration. We can sell it. We can change what garage it's in. Or we can use it ourselves. I'm curious how you track... where it is easily. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Oh well. Uh, let's get our rest stop. So, there's not anything to discover in Elko. I've already been here once. Uh, we can get a nap at the Kenworth dealership. There's also one over here. Kenworth dealership's closer, so we'll go there. Alright. Okay, go back into first person, get our camera the way we like it. Alright, we could make a right out of here. Doesn't look like it's gonna... Uh, can I make that turning? Maybe? Yeah, we just cleared it. I might run into this trailer, but... We'll have faith. Hey, there you go. It looks like we're clear in that mirror. Alright. We're in here. Speed limit's only 30. And then we need to make another left, so we're just stay in the left lane. I hate speed limits. That are this low. Alright. Oh. Turn green. Put your, put your engine brake on and it will turn. Are we gonna eat this light? Ah, go! Damn it. <laughs> Alright, we cut it a little close there. Oh well, we were due a, a red light violation at some point. Parking this way. And I knew it was going to turn in my face too. So, I have no excuse there. No excuse at all. Alright, let's turn off the engine. And nap. I hope that didn't hurt my uh, co-insurance payment. Alright, so Molly delivered something. Oh yeah, Bujo showed up. He gave us almost 10 grand. I expected that to be a lot, because that was a long distance trip. Alright, let's take a look at our drivers. See what's going on. And see... Uh, where they are. Because I don't think we're going to have that trailer get used until someone actually is coming back to Salem, which I'm not sure Molly was doing. Yeah, she's in a Eureka right now, and he's in Las Vegas. So it'd be Simon who would be the first one with an opportunity to use it. And he's not due until six hours. Okay. Uh, as far as my insurance... Now we're still good. I'm at 2%, which is really good from what I understand. So this co-insurance is how much you have to pay if you're repairing damage. So the truck damage is worth, let's say, 1200 I only have to pay 200 because I'm paying 2%. And I guess they round down quite heavily. So that's kind of how that works. The more dangerously you drive, the, the higher percentage gets uh, and the more you have to pay. So... 
That's a pretty good rate. I don't know if tickets affected or not. But I haven't had an accident in a long time, so. Okay, so let's get a job. I'd like to go to Salt Lake City. There's a job there. We also have Ogden, Utah, which is close by. I think this is our only opportunity. This is big cargo. I, I think we can handle it. It's more the size of it. I, I've never delivered whatever this thing is, tube grinder. So I don't know how big it is. It doesn't look that big. I mean, it's got three axles in the back. But if we just compare size-wise, it looks like it's about the same size as a container. It's just really heavy. I could be wrong. I mean, we'll find out when I get it. We've got four hours to get it. It's a standard delivery, so we have plenty of time to deliver it. We've got until almost 5 p.m., and so that gives us 12 hours. Uh, High-value cargo is uh, heavy, so it gives us a little bit extra money. I mean, it's almost $50 per mile. That's really, really good. It's the best I can see here. And it gets us where we want to go, so... Uh, that all sounds good to me. Now, it's going to yell at me because of uh, it being heavy cargo, which I'm trying to let me know. Make sure... You Again, this warning comes up whether your truck can do it or not. So, again, don't worry if you see this message. It's not saying you can't do it. It's just saying these are some things you need to mind on whether or not you can deliver this. Our heavy cargo rating is good, but again, with this gearbox, it doesn't really rate it properly. So, we'll be able to do the job fine. We've hauled heavier with the with a, a worse suspension. I'm not suspension, gearbox. So, we'll be good. Oh, I have to start the engine. Uh, as far as repair, all I have to do to get repair, just go to that wrench. I don't need it, though. I'm at 0% across the board from what I remember seeing there. I want to hit that Mustang. I think we'll get to clear it, but I just wanted to slow down so we didn't hit it. Okay. okay. Go into second gear. How's the gear shifter? It's still attached. That's good. Um, I don't have a stop sign. It is not clear. <laughs> what did I just say about an accident? Now, I don't think I got a ticket there. <laughs> I should have stopped. Let's let's check that. Did my insurance just go up? I don't think I got a ticket. No. <laughs> but I definitely just got damage. Whoops. All right, I'm starting to drive like crap. That was a risk I shouldn't have taken. Oh, well. We didn't get a ticket, so I'll say it's all good. I saw the accident happening, too. <laughs> or coming. And I didn't hit the brakes, so that's my fault. Oh, well. <laughs> Alright, this time we're gonna stop. I thought I could get away with it, and I thought my mirror would let me see it coming before it actually smacked into me, but the angle wasn't right. Alright. Looks good. take our job. Now, we can't make any of these mistakes once we have the actual cargo here. Okay. Can you... Alright, first off, can I actually see where the cargo is? Because I don't know where it is. There it is. Yeah, it's not that big. Alright. Let's start reversing. See, give me one second. My microphone is hitting my steering wheel. I don't know if you guys are hearing a noise there, but I think I gotta raise it up a bit. There were a couple times my hands contacted the microphone a little bit. I don't know. It's just kind of the nature of, of things and how they are. 
I can't raise it up too high or... Alright, well anyway, let's get back onto the... Get nice and slow. So yeah, I don't know what I think about driving this with the steering wheel. It's definitely more immersive and everything, but it's it's also more tiring. Uh, has a lot more room for mistakes. Essentially, that mis that accident happened because I got lazy. I didn't want to have to do all the work that would be required to slow down and stop and have to do it right. I hit the wrong button and I turned my engine off. So, that is what it is though. Okay, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of creative driving to be able to turn out of here. Thankfully, it's a right-hand turn. But I'm gonna pull the trailer out first and then back in. And this is one of those things I'm trying to get better with. So I was trying to use that nose mirror to see if anybody was coming, and I really, I couldn't see at the angle that I was at. Looks like we cleared the trailer. Okay, I don't have a stop sign, but they do. Now, whether or not the AI respects that, I don't know that if they're going to. Okay, we're gonna make this turn nice and wide so we don't collide with anyone. <clears throat> okay, we make a right turn here. Is the light gonna... Yeah, it's gonna change. I was just as I was... Oops. I had to turn off the gear change, not... Put it on the other way. Okay. I should probably be in third for this. A truck coming. Not actually sure if I needed to merge there or not. Oh, I need to get over. Or in up a couple gears. Yeah, it does merge eventually. Uh, we still have our headlights on. Good. Gear. There we go. He's, uh... Alright. Lame. We just got onto the highway and they're already making me slow down. Go to the way station. And I stopped just before it. <laughs> oh. There we go. Boop. Okay. Good to go. Now the question is, when is it going to stop being 15 miles an hour? Because I'm going way over that. At that point. A car coming. Maybe I can get away with a merge here. Hopefully that truck doesn't slam into the back of me. Ah, fourth gear, come on. Doing a little bit of a... gear shifter check to make sure it's attached. <laughs> Alright. Well, oh, back on the highway. I don't mind if I'm a little rude to the AI with making them slow down and stuff, because they're plenty rude to me.
I will say that the steering wheel feels nice. I don't know if it's real leather or if it's like faux leather, but it's got like a leather stitched. Oh, we gotta get up into another gear. Or down a gear, technically. Now this this steering wheel is still functional without the eight shifter. Um, so it has a couple paddles behind the steering wheel that you could use for your like if you wanted to do a sequential gearbox, you can shift up and down with that. I use it for my turn signals though, and I like that setup. Um, but that's really what it's for is the sequential gearbox setup. And obviously, you can put your uh, blinkers on something else. I mean, this has enough buttons for that. Alternatively, you could set it to automatic if you don't like that idea either. It's really up to you. I mean, you can still use the steering wheel with a lot of stuff. <clears throat> Definitely would lower the, the difficulty of using this system. So we're now down to 70. And I do have a couple buttons on my steering wheel that I don't really have on essential functions, like, for example, the horn. That's entirely not necessary. So. Now, I'm going the speed limit right now, but what I'm worried about is that truck in front of me. Because I know it isn't. So I'm just gonna kind of coast here. Pretty heavy traffic. Uh, I'm gonna turn my lights off. Yeah, he's slowing down for some reason. I don't know why. He's slowing down a lot for some reason. I have no idea why he just slowed down, but he's kind of pissing me off. Oh. He slowed down because the guy in front of him is driving like an idiot. All right, well, I'm getting over nonetheless. Because I'm not going to go 20 miles an hour under the speed limit for this blue bus. Um, you know, I didn't look at what the road looks like. We are going uphill a bit, so I'm not going to go up in the 7th just yet. I'm not sure what the clearance on my trailer is, but I think I can get over. Yeah, I don't think we're actually going to practically be going 80 here anytime soon, because it seems like the traffic's pretty heavy. Alright, I'm going to try the, uh, the gear shift here. So, that button... I, I want to get over to... Red car past me. Pass me quicker. I don't want to be behind these guys anymore. I should probably check the map before I make decisions like that. Because as much as I can get around these guys, I don't know... It's still going to take a while to do so. Alright, we'll cruise control it for a bit. Not another way station. Don't make me stop. You bastard. Alright, so... Button. I don't know. Uh, fourth gear? Why is it not going into fourth gear? I'm in, I'm in the thing. Did I not hit the right button? I, I'm confused about my gear shift here. Okay, is it this button? There. I don't... I, I'm really confused by the, the button here. So it's not being consistent on one button I'm supposed to press to switch to the different uh, 
things. Which is one of the reasons why I'm not very confident with it. Because I, I press one button, and it, and it works, but then getting back, I press the other button, which should switch it the other way, and it doesn't work. I had to press the same button I used to switch it in the first place. Which I don't think is how it's supposed to work. That's not how it's set it up in my gear bind, uh, bindings. Hold on a second. Oh, actually, no. Now we can go fast. I'm gonna have to toy around with that. It's not like I get that many opportunities to be in seventh gear. It'd come up more often if I had a higher... Oh, shit. Not sure if this white car was gonna slow down for me or not. All right. <laughs> Uh, we'll give it a try here again. So it should be... I mean, I don't even know how I describe it. It should be this one button that switches it up. But there should be a different button that switches it down. But I pressed the same button twice. I don't, just don't get it. Go sixth. I'm curious what button I'm supposed to press to get it up into 7th if I get there. Alright, let's look at the path, see what we got uh, coming up. Zoomed in, let's zoom out. Oh, we're almost there. Might not really get to try that out then. Um, I'm gonna force it, so... This should be the right button. And that worked. Now the question is, coming back into 6th, is it the same button to switch it, or a different button? Because if that's true, then I'm confused and maybe need to change what the key binding is. So, let's give it a try. I'm gonna go into 6th. Press the same button. That worked. So it's the same button to switch it. That's not, I think, how it's supposed to work. Because the key binding is shift to one register, shift back to the other one, I thought. So I'm going to change what key binding that is, because that is not what I'd like. I can even show you guys the process here. But it's very possible I misunderstood. And then that's a button I can switch, I guess. Maybe the other button is if, like, you had an 18-speed gearbox, it would shift you into the register after that one? Perhaps. I don't know. We'll take a look at the keybinds and stuff, and you guys get to see some of the process of this. It's, it's kind of a tedious process, and unfortunately, uh, you can only have one profile under a, like, one control setup under a profile. You might not be able to do that, like, if I had a different profile, but profiles are more or less games, right? So I could have a different game that I started somewhere else, my headquarters would be a different thing, but it'd be starting from square one. And then maybe I could do a different control setup with that guy, but you can't have more than one control setup under the same character. So I can't practically switch from steering wheel back to my controller, for instance. All right, we're getting off now. Give it a little bit of break, too. All right, going to neutral. And break all the way. Okay, looks clear. Yeah, so this is still like a learning process for me. This is the first time I'm... I mean, I practiced it a little bit yesterday. This is the first time I'm really using it long term. I'm definitely learning some things about it. And I feel like I'm getting a little better. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Put it in first gear and let myself stall. Okay. <clears throat> So I think we talked about this in a previous stream, and we were talking about the lights. 
And pretty much, I think the consensus is, there are lights that exist like this in the U.S. where they have the red arrow. And in the U.S., if there's a red arrow like that, that means you can only turn if you have a green arrow. But typically, when there's a turn signal like that, the way it will work is there's your traditional light, you know, green, yellow, red. And then next to that will be a uh, separate series of lights, but there's only two of them, a green and yellow arrow. And typically, when that's the case, then that means you can turn when you have a green turn signal. But you could also turn, while it's a green light, under caution. That's pretty typical of American roads. And it's the most common turn signal you see. These ones with the red ones, I've seen them again in real life, but they're very rare. Well, in this game, every single turn signal is like that. So that's not really necessarily realistic. And I don't think it's an area thing, too, because we talked to somebody from the Pacific Northwest, and they said that their, their lights pretty much work the same way ours do, uh, where I live. So I'm just going to wait for the light. Go in a second. So it's a conceited that... Shit. I'm not sure if I can pull this thing. This happens every so often. As you judge, I am, might be very badly stuck now. You judge a corner badly. But I don't know I can fix this. Maybe, if this red band wasn't in the way. We're gonna have to pull it way off. Yeah, I might be real damn stuck. I might have to load back a save. Because this... This is bad enough. Well, maybe. Maybe I can fix it. There's a real possibility I back into somebody. What do I need to do to fix this? I need to go this way. I can't see if anybody's coming, though. And it's possible I just got hung up in the same spot. Alright, I cleared it. <laughs> Whoopsies. That's what happens when you don't take a, a corner right and you take it too sharp an angle. Uh, it's alright. I do that every so often. I've been trying to get better about it, but yeah. Good night. Yeah. Another thing I need to tie together in all this, using the H-shifter, is using engine braking better. But that's something that will come with practice as well. How much more do we have? 20 miles? Okay. Going quite well. Just ignore the part where I hung up on a light pole. <laughs> the important part is we didn't damage our cargo, which I'm pretty sure we did. I can double check that, but I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, I think I'm going to stay in this gear for the hill. The scenery's changed yet again. Looks nice. So yeah, this is my first time in the Utah area. 
Looks like we got a 50 mile an hour speed limit here. Are we act? We should already be in Utah, I think. As a matter of fact, did we we went past Salt Lake City, so this is like more out in the outskirts of the city. That's one thing that's very interesting thing about this game is what can what is considered part of a city. It starts becoming more complicated. I, I wish I had a really good example for you uh, of a town where. Probably a good example that I'm really, really familiar with would be something like Portland, right? So Portland, the names here, this, this, all of this, that's part of Portland, and this is part of Portland, even though it's kind of closer to Vancouver, in theory, based off that name, well, it's the Portland Cargo Center, so that's part of Portland. So it gets a little messy. This possibly is also part of Portland. So you see how much of an area consists of, of, of Portland here, even though there are other towns like right nearby. So it can be confusing sometimes when you're taking a job. Uh, I find that even more so in Euro Truck Simulator, uh, a problem. Like for example, I went to uh, Sardinia, the island in the Mediterranean, and there's only three major towns. Okay, we're turning here. On that map. But, with that being said, there's all kinds of... I'm not really sure where I'm going after this point. There's all kinds of uh, places you can go to that I guess simulate smaller towns. I guess we come here. And you can travel quite a distance to get to where your cargo area is. Please tell me that this opens. There we go. <laughs> wondering how far up I had to go. I guess right up to it. What did I hit? Oh. Guess I hit, barely touched that thing. Can I still pull forward? Yes. And then this guy just stops in front of me. Oh, come on, AI. Don't do this shit to me. So the AI is having a little bit of a brain fart. Oh, they, they collided with each other. That shows you the, the quality of the AI sometimes. <laughs> Again, I don't think I damaged the cargo there. The trailer isn't necessarily the cargo, but we can double check that. So we just come over here. Yeah, so 1% trailer damage. It's not a big deal. It doesn't really affect the, the job at all. How much does this pay? 12,000, that's quite a lot. Okay. Considering the distance we had to travel, I don't think it was that far. But again, it's a heavy cargo, important cargo, all that. Now, if we were tired, we're seemingly a ways away from anywhere. Now we're going down into a quarry, it looks like. Five here. Probably taking that too sharp. I was watching my trailer, not my truck. <laughs> oh, Jesus. This has been a very sloppy session, but eh. Looked like the trailer was going to hang, and then I was just staring at that trailer hoping it wouldn't hang. All right. All right, come on.
All right, so once I deliver this, I'll show you guys some of the key bindings and stuff and like how all that works. It's kind of weird because you, you can't see my steering wheel. I did put a picture of it up in the, my Discord, but... Uh, let's do the play it safe. Right, so this wants us to pull it through back here. All right. Okay, Simon is delivered. So I'm going to have to check on him. Unfortunately, I don't know if enough time is going to pass for him to pick up that trailer or not. All right, I'm going to come off this way a bit. All right, let me see what this looks like. Okay. Um, I don't think it's going to let me get away with second gear with this heavy of a load. All right, so I'm going to take it real wide. Slow her down. I think I need to take it a little bit more wide until it straightens out. Straightens out. It actually might be pretty good. We might be able to get away with it. Oop. Wait. I think this is gonna do it. There we go. Okay. Job's done. So that's one of the things I've been trying to get better about is being used to like how wide I have to take a trailer. I think we did that really well. All right, up to level 18. So good pay for this job. All right, we just leveled up. I think I want to finish out the hazardous cargo so I have all that unlocked. Let's go ahead and do so. So this last class is Corrosive Substances. Sounds scary, but it gives us full access to every job we could possibly take, so... Okay. We do have some upgrades available. Anything interesting? We're more worried about Kenworth because that's what we have. Nothing flies out at me as being super interesting because we got a couple paint jobs and stuff like that, but that's not really exciting. Alright. I didn't think there was anything at... 17. Cool sh stuff should happen at 18. Now, trailer upgrades, we got a bunch of stuff at 17. That, that I was aware of. So, yeah. Whole bunch of stuff. Okay. So, we completed a job. Let's go ahead and save. And, as I was saying, I don't think Simon's dri driven far enough. Yeah. For him to take that trailer, but I want to see what he does. Uh, Molly is coming back from Eureka to Salem. Hopefully, she has cargo this time. And then you are coming back to Salem from Las Vegas. He's got a long time to make it. I mean, it says she has something, but I don't know if that really. That's something I'm going to have to pay more attention to. The time she said she came back with nothing, did it say she what she had there or not? Because like here, he's coming from Walbert, and she's coming from HMS Machinery. Hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean she has a job, though. Yeah, I don't know. In any case, let's talk about the keybinds, because that's what we talked about earlier. So, as far as how you set this stuff up, if you've never played this game before, if you go to controls, there's an input wizard. This will go you through, like, a more basic process. Uh, so, you need to make sure, obviously, that your controller, in this case, the Logitech G27, is being detected uh, and all that. But, you have a whole bunch of subtypes and stuff. You, you know, your H-shifter, uh, what... So the H shifter, this is what type of thing you want to do. So there's four things. Simple automatic. This is more or less set up for keyboard uh, and mouse play. 
uh, W, your forward key, or wh whatever forward key you want to use, but let's say it's W. That's going to be your accelerate. S, in that case, would be your your brake, but it'd also be your reverse. That's the simplification of the automatic. With real automatic, you would have to shift into your forward, neutral, reverse, you know, what have you. Hey, Ted. So that's how that works. So you'd still need to have some button somewhere on your controller that would control upshifting and downshifting. Sequential is picking specific gears. So automatic takes care of all the gear shifting for you. This works where you still have to shift up and down, but you're actually picking the gears. And then eight shifter is what I have set up for this stream. And in this case, you're definitely going to need a steering wheel. These two you could very easily do with uh, a normal controller, like an Xbox One controller or what have you. Um, you maybe would be able to do this with a keyboard, but I'd say it'd be kind of complicated. Um, but I don't know about sequential. Sequential would be kind of tough with a keyboard. In theory, you could do it, but I don't know. So with H Shifter, there's different ways you can do it. And the way I have it set up, and I don't know if this is necessarily the best. So this is all your key binds. So you've got your joystick, uh, your your wheel axis. So I'm turning my wheel, and you see the little yellow bar. Your acceleration axis, in this case, it's my accelerator pedal. So that's me putting it in and out. Your brake axis, again. This is a very heavy pedal. One of the reasons why it's kind of tiring to use the steering wheel for long periods. Your clutch pedal. And uh, then you can set up your look up, down axis. I just use my mouse for this, so I don't have this set up. But if you were using a controller, you'd maybe use your right joystick for this. And you get to pick what axis you want. Uh, and you get to set up various things with it. So this is where we're, we're concerned about. So shifter layout. There's a number of different ways you can do this. And I'm not sure if I could really describe this the best way. But I'm using the range setup. And the thing that I was a little confused of, so all this is like your shifter position. So these are all the different quote unquote buttons. And really, in reality, it's a shifter, but these are all the buttons that my joystick uses to do the different gear changes. The thing that really matters to me though, is the shifter toggle. I thought one was up and one was down. It turns out that's not true. So I think I want to change this. So I want to make that my one and I'm guessing two would be if you had like an 18 speed gearbox. So, so the toggle one is gonna be switching between one through six. And let's say you had an 18 speed gearbox. It would toggle to uh, seven to 12. I'm gonna guess, this is a guess, that the second shifter button, it would be 13 to 18. I don't know that for sure though, because the gearbox I have is only a seven speed. So, I'm guessing that's what that means. I misunderstood it initially. Shifter toggle toggles use switch mode. I can't. Oh, I can't select that. I don't know. What, see, I don't know what this stuff means, and this is something I need to have more experience with. Oh well, it is what it is. And this would be our more simplified thing. If we were using an automatic transmission, this would be how we would shift. So, 10 would be what our third gear is, and 11 would be our fourth gear, so it would just be forward and back. Very doable. So you could do your, uh, as we were showing here, you could do, rather than 8-shifter, you could do real automatic, and we already have the keybind set up for that. And it would be still relatively natural. Okay. So that's the one change I'm going to make. One other change I want to make under gameplay settings. I turned on automatic retarder because I thought it would be good when I was using a controller. I want to turn that off. I don't have a retarder yet, but pretty much what that does if you have automatic retarder on is if you had a retarder. So retarder has uh, helps. It, it uses your gearbox to help slow you down. If you turn this on, it use, it's used in conjunction with your brakes to help you slow down even faster. Well, my big brake pedal is heavy enough that I feel like that's totally unnecessary. So I'm going to say no to that one. Um, but the other thing I, I talked about earlier 
with the cruise control. I'm trying to see what that's under. Probably under the truck settings. Yeah, right here. Smart cruise control. By default, it's set to tolerance of five kilometers an hour or three miles per hour. I don't like that because I usually put my cruise control at the absolute speed limit. So I set it to tolerance zero, so it will try and stick to whatever I set it to. It won't give it a little bit of uh, wiggle room. So that's the way I prefer it. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's see if there's anything in town. Well, first we're going to take a nap. Probably, because I think we're going to need to. Um, but there's a couple things in town we want to explore. So we have a thing here, which is probably a dealership. And we have a thing here, which is more than likely going to be our... Uh, what is it called? Your recruitment agency. So I don't see a reason why we wouldn't come over here this way. And then go there. Uh, I'm going to take my nap here first, though. I don't know if I need fuel, but we can get fuel after we go check out that. Okay. Go back into first-person perspective. Turn the camera around a little bit, like how I like. Okay. Let's get going. How are we doing on that? Okay, gear shifter still attached to my desk. I don't like going too fast on these off-road bits because we saw on a previous stream sometimes you take damage driving too fast, so we'll, we'll keep it nice and slow. And I don't know if you can hear it, but my, my steering wheel is giving me the rumble stuff because we're going off-road right now. I'm assuming you guys can't hear it. Thank you for the follow, Woodhall. Oh, <laughs> I missed my turning. Uh, actually, I might want to reverse that because that's a pretty crazy bank there. I don't want to drive over that. So this road in front of me is not a real road according to the map, which is what threw me off. All right. We had that weird gate structure that we had to go through. Might not have to go through it on the way out. Okay, now we go this way. You know, there was traffic coming through here. I probably should take it a little bit more carefully. Normally, there's not a whole lot of traffic in these areas. Oh, you know what? It was at the top of the hill. I remember. Alright, cool. But yeah, with my first foray into using this H-Shifter with American Truck Simulator, I feel like it went pretty well. We definitely made mistakes, but with practice, a lot of this stuff will get cleared up, I hope. Okay, there's our loan installment. But we're making money. I mean, we've made good money on this contract. My loan installment's not that expensive. Having three drivers, those guys probably pay off the loan by themselves. I could just go and take a nap forever <laughs> and I'd be financially fine probably. But we have goals and aspirations and one of the reasons why we're here in Salt Lake City is this is a potential of expansion. I don't have the money for it now but I'm not that far away from the money. I, I, I'd take a loan to do it, maybe. But, yeah, so this is our little gate. Gotta stop at. I'll go to the one on the right. Where's that sweet spot where it opens? So you definitely need to come to a stop. Otherwise, the gate doesn't open. All right, we still need to get over, though. All right. Let's be good and actually look around. That looks clear. I don't know what the speed limit is, though. We'll keep an eye out. It looks good. Looks like 50. Try 
truck moves a lot faster when we don't have a heavy load on it. Which sometimes takes some getting used to, because we had real heavy cargo, and now we have nothing. <laughs> so the thing's like a rocket ship. <laughs> Yeah, so I think the only thing that's on my list now is expand the roster of trailers we have. And also expand into another he uh, garage somewhere. So I'm leaning towards either somewhere here in Utah or somewhere in Arizona. Because I feel like that would cover a lot of the areas that our other garage isn't covering. I'm just going to stick cruise control on because it seems like we're fairly straight here for a bit. I say that and then we've got a speed reduction. Still okay. We're still okay in this gear though. I'd say Utah has uh, the kind of speed limits I kind of expect uh, from where I live uh, because... Pretty typical, that's not the right gear to be in. Pretty typical where I live would be uh, 35 in towns. That's not a hard set rule, but I'd say 35 in towns. If you're on more rural roads, that could be anywhere from 40 to 50, typically speaking. Now, there might be an exception to that, but for the most part, I think that would be correct. I might miss this light because I borked my... Uh, we're okay. And then... Highway could be anywhere from 50 to 65, typically. Where I live. Alright, we're up to 45. Ah, shit. I don't want to be in gear. Neutral. <laughs> there we go. Alright, I don't know what lane we want to be in at this point. Well, I, I guess we don't get a choice, because... <laughs> yeah, merge is over. Alright, so this is one of the things we wanted to check out. So, I don't know if I'm going to have to, like... I'm going to go over on this side a little bit, see if it will... There we go. That's what I want. I just want it to give it to me. You have to get close enough that it registers, so... That's why we're driving a little weird there. Uh, let's go up into 5th. Oh, it slowed down to 30. Yeah, see? There's a lot of speed difference in speed in this one town. In a slower section of a town, it might be 25. That would be pretty typical as well. Uh, I would say that's not super common. It depends on the, the city you're in. Like, that's a city choice. And it depends on how kind of restrictive they are in their attitude uh, on whether or not they're going to go with the, the 25 mile an hour speed limit. Um, but yeah, usually if they pick a 25 mile an hour speed limit, it's because they want to slow you down, right? Usually the kind of towns that have 25 mile an hour sp speed limits are also the kind of towns that have lights everywhere. So, and they're set up in such a way that it's hard not to hit. Uh, it's hard not to hit a light. Like, you can't make it through. Usually, they're timed in such a way that you hit every single damn one. Okay, now there was a plan on where I was going to go to nap. Oh, I was supposed to nap at the dealership, damn it. All right, we'll go back to the dealership. That's fine. I was supposed to stop there first. I forgot. We'll just use this turnaround. Anyway, that's usually how it is in my my area in real life. There are exceptions to the rule, but for the most part, I'd say that is accurate. Oop, first gear, there we go. And then I let it stall. <laughs> See, these are the brain fart moments that we'll hopefully clean up with further play with this setup.
All right, stop sign. Unfortunately, that gas station doesn't have a rest stop where I'd go there. Um, we do need fuel. You know what? I'm going to go straight through and we'll get fuel. Because we're, we're closer to where the fuel is right now. Because I haven't gotten fuel in a little while, so... Um, okay, it didn't let me turn in there, so that must not have been the right place. I guess I'm glad that that barrier was there. Okay. Come on. You can do it. Cool. Alright. Hoping this is my engine button off. Yeah, that is. Oh, cool. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a lot of money. All right. Almost $400. What's the price of fuel here? Uh, how many gallons did I fill up? I mean, I guess that's a lot of gallons. But that, that fuel is not that bad of a price. Yeah. All right. We can look at the sign and see how much it costs. There should be a sign somewhere out front, I think. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that's an that's an in only. Two ninety six for diesel. That's that's better than the area I was in before. They're all out arrows. <laughs> F it, I'm going this way. I don't care what the sign says. I can't really see that way, but we don't really care because we're going right. All right, we should be good. Okay, and then we want to turn left here. Alright, cool. We got the explorations in Salt Lake City. That garage isn't necessarily in the most convenient spot. It's in behind with all those stop signs and stuff. It's definitely not in the heart of the town. Not far off, though. You're a train, I just don't... Oh, it's gonna be right in front of us. That's cool, we get to see a train. Pull up right to it. Let's go into second person, for or third person. <laughs> Where is it? Must be coming this way. There it is. Ooh, that looks like a passenger train. At least to me it does. We'll just go back to the, I think it was a Volvo dealership. But, you know, I should probably wait until the signal stops, because I think invisible walls are a thing with those rail crossings until it's fully cleared, because I, I remember clipping one at one point. What? Put it in neutral. <laughs> that was an accident. I didn't mean to go into third. That was a controller thing. I think I just dipped it into third when I was taking my foot off the clutch pedal to put it in neutral. Oh well. down to 30. That's okay. I blew past the... Oh. Beep, beep, beep! <laughs> Try and go around this car, so... 
I thought it was a little further back. You know what? We'll just pull right in front of him. Well, no, not now. I won't. There we go. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> That's one way to get in. <laughs> All right. You know what? I'm going to do a little bit of maintenance. I don't think my truck needs it that bad, but what the hell? We're here. Okay. Do that. Service. Yeah, it's still only going to be $200, even though we racked up more. It doesn't seem right. But I'll take it. Okay. I think this way enters the same, same area as the rest area. Matter of fact, it's right here. I'm not even going to bother parking cleanly. That's good enough for me. <laughs> it's not double parking, it's... triple parking. <laughs> Alright. 